Living Local Carolina with Katie Turner. Local trends, shopping, dining, and more. This is Living Local Carolina. The following portion of Living Local Carolina is sponsored by Beach Injury Lawyers. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on Living Local Carolina. I feel like a broken record. I'm back with the guys from Beach Injury Lawyers, Will and Greg. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Nice to be back. All right. So a little birdie told me that you were in trial this week. I was. And yeah. it's... Did you win? I did. Even a <laughs> blind squirrel can find a nut every now and then. All but right. we... Yeah, it's something you don't get to do that much anymore because mm -hmm. most cases in, in the state, uh, they settle during mediation. So you know, trying cases and going to court and arguing before a jury, it, it's kind of a lost art. Yeah. And, you know, that's why if you have been injured, it's, it's important when, when choosing a lawyer, a personal injury lawyer, to, to look and see what their experience is. For me personally, you know, I started practicing in 1996 and I tried my first case one week after I was, I was sworn in. I will say it didn't go very well. But, you know, you want someone that's, that, that's tried cases, you know, tried cases in state court and federal court. I've been to, you know, most of the counties in the state of South Carolina. I've appeared in their courthouses, federal courts as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a certified mediator by the National Association of Certified Mediators um, out of New York. You know, I'm, I'm a vice president for the Horry County Bar Association. And, uh, you know, I also serve on the arbitration, South Carolina arbitration panel. And what that is, is people who, who have property damage claims from accidents, they'll bring it before uh, a panel of special referees. And we decide whether or not, you know, they have a legitimate claim. And if they do have a legitimate claim, how much they're going to get paid. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, I think it's important if you are going to retain a personal injury lawyer, make sure they have the experience. Yeah. That would definitely give me peace of mind. But Will, do you want to talk about your experience as well a little bit? Yeah, sure. So I've been practicing since uh, 06, and most of my experience in the courtroom is more in the Social Security realm mm. and the workers' comp realm. Um, I try to do it, do it in my head, and I, I have no idea. I would say at least 500 Social Security hearings, Jeez. maybe 1,000, somewhere, somewhere in that ballpark, um, in that range, and um, numerous uh, workers' comp hearings. So those are a little bit different. There's no jury um, in a social security hearing. It's just an administrative law judge. Um, and it's uh, me, the client, the judge, and typically, uh, typically a vocational expert, and, and, and that's the setting. Workers' comp is more adversarial, another attorney on the other side. However, there is no jury. It's a commissioner that makes the decision. And honestly, what I love about y'all, too, is that in places where one of you may lack, the other kind of makes up for it, for lack of a better way to put it. Well, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, I mean, that's what makes a good partnership yeah. is, you know, the things that I don't know, Will normally does and, and vice versa. Yeah. Um, Will is, you know, like you say, he's more in the administrative arena um, with Social Security Workers Comp. I'm more in the courtroom. Um, and again, I, I wouldn't know what to do on a workers' compensation hearing or a social security mm -hmm. hearing, but guess what? I got a good partner that mm -hmm. knows exactly what he's doing. And how long have you been working together? Actually, only three years. Mm -hmm. we, it seems longer than that. I know. We, it does. We <laughs> actually, and again, I graduated 10 years earlier than Will, but we both started out working for the same law firm. And um, I had met Will and I, I, I knew about Will and it just came about three, a little over three years ago that Will was looking to, uh, uh, to expand the litigation practice, you know, someone that, that, that's going to go in and try more cases. And I was looking, I was living in Greenville at the time and I talked to Will and the next thing you know, we're, you know, we're a partnership. Wow. Yeah. I specifically wanted somebody that had experience on the defense side, mm -hmm. which is what Greg did to, to give us a, a leg up on, you know, on a lot of personal injury attorneys who only have represented plaintiffs, so he can understand the other side. It's been helpful. I anyway. love it. A pair of great experience here. Now, guys, stick with us because coming up, we have a new little segment for our What's New in the Law, but this one's a little different than we normally do, so stay tuned.
Welcome back to Living Local Carolina, everyone. I'm in the studio with the guys from Beach Injury Lawyers, and we've been doing a segment called What's New in the Law, but today we're going to be talking about what's, I guess, old in the law. Yeah, we, we, we thought it would be, we thought it would be interesting look at, to, to look at some of the old laws that are, that are still on the books, and, and these, are, these are laws that are not enforced. Once we start going over them, you'll, uh, you, you'll understand why mm. there's, you know, our first one, South Carolina prohibits tattoos of the head, neck, and face area. And we're the only state in the U.S. that, that actually uh, doesn't allow those type of tattoos, but it's not enforced. It, 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 it's, it's not enforced here in the state. Yeah, we were talking about that. So Jelly Roll would be allowed I mean, to come yeah. to the concert. Mike Tyson could come here. But Post he maybe on. couldn't get a tattoo in state. <laughs> I think they would still do it. I think they roll the dice on that, or at least it seems mm. like. It. <laughs> now, it's also illegal to be present at the fighting of a duel. When, so, are, when was the last time you were at a duel? Uh, man, it's, it's been a minute. It's I was going to say, don't incriminate it's, it's, yourself. It's been a bit. It, it was, though. That, that's really funny is that, you know, to, to be, just to be present at a duel is illegal uh, here, here in South Carolina. Love it. Also, dancing at a club. Must halt at midnight on Saturday night only, though. Um, what? Fortunately, it would halt well before that for me. But um, I'm sure you've danced past midnight. So have you broken the law? I've broken the law, I must confess. <laughs> I mean, that just seems silly. That's the night to dance at midnight is on a Saturday it, it, night. It, it goes back to the, you know, to the Sabbath. So just like we're going to talk, well, yes. we'll, we'll talk later about alcohol sales, but in, on Sundays. So you know, it kind of goes back to the, uh, you know, because we are we are a southern state. We are mm -hmm. in the Bible Belt. Um, what else mm -hmm. we got on the list? A, a railroad cannot be removed from a town with more than 500 people. Okay. I have no idea. I tried to actually look that up, and I could not for the life of me figure out exactly why. They need the railroad. That's on the books. They need it. And you would know. He uh, defended the railroad <laughs> for. I did. I used to. I used to defend. Uh, uh, Norfolk Southern Railway Company for, for a number of okay. years. So, yeah. What else we got? Um, well, if you're in a buggy and you pull up to a four-way stop, you have to get out, discharge your pistol in the air so that people on both sides know you're coming. What? I'm going to assume that's before horns okay. were available, possibly. When, if you're in a buggy. <laughs> if you are in a buggy. And, before. and you must be 18 to play pinball. Oh. And again, while it's it's not enforced, it's still on the books. That kind of goes back to when pinball was was considered gambling, and there were some mafia influences with um, with the machines. So again, you're not supposed to play pinball uh, if you're under the if pin you're under the age it's, of eighteen. Who's playing pinball under the age of eighteen? I would say the vast majority of people are under 18 that are playing pinball. I would say the vast majority are <laughs> over 18 because it's a little more nostalgic for them. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, maybe over 65. Maybe. Even, even yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a good one. Um, any male over 16 who seduces a, a woman um, under the promise of marriage must actually marry her. If not, he's guilty of a misdemeanor. All right. That. We were laughing earlier. That's that's sort of like a meatloaf song. But I told Will that you know half the population would be in prison if this were of the male population would be in prison if this were actually enforced. Mm. And only half probably know who meatloaf is. Well, I so. didn't. <laughs> so all right, shouting a four-letter word. Now this is for for uh, Myrtle Beach, Horry County. Shouting a four-letter word at someone can land you in trouble because you could face. Anyone using profanity can be faced jail or citation of the city's lewd, obscene, and profane language ordinance. So be careful what you say. It, wait, it has to be like a curse word? Yes. Okay, okay. It does. Thank you for the clarification there. You're All right, we got, a couple, we got a couple more seconds. Sure. Lightning round, last um, one. Last one, it's illegal to sleep on the beach at night. You can sleep on the beach uh, during the day, but not between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. These last two, could be yeah. enforceable still. I was going to say, these are important to know, especially when the weather is warm. No sleeping on the beach, y'all. Well, that was fun. We're going to have to do this one again. <laughs> but stay good. with us, everyone. We have more coming up as well as a special guest. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.
Welcome back to Living Local Carolina. Today I am in the studio with the guys from Beach Injury Lawyers, Will and Greg, as well as a special guest, Daryl. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Okay, Daryl, you are a physician's assistant. Tell me a little bit about where you are, what you do, and a little bit about your story. Well, I'm a PA. I've been a PA for about 21 years. We moved here from Savannah, Georgia. And uh, initially, I worked at another urgent care and, and had the opportunity to open our own practice as a PA, was a supervising physician. And we opened Urgent Care and Family Medicine Conway in December of uh, 2019. Small to begin with, but from the beginning, we we've came into a pandemic. So mm -hmm. we served everyone that, that needed our service from from young to old college students, we, we started seeing a need for personal injury as well. And that's kind of how I met these gentlemen here over the years. We've, we've worked together uh, providing for that service for people who are either uninsured or underinsured or um, in need of, of medical services when they're in a traumatic injury. We, we, we'd like to explain that what we see a lot of times is when someone you know, gets in a, in a motor vehicle accident and they don't have health insurance, they think mm -hmm. that they're not able to get treatment. Um, so one of the providers that, that we use and that, would, that does treat people um, in an automobile accident without health insurance is Daryl. And, um, and he also is just an, an excellent medical professional. Wow. I feel like this definitely goes hand in hand here, but Daryl, why don't you tell me a little bit about why you choose to do this and why you love your job so much? Well, I've been in the healthcare field starting as a, a medic in the Army years ago and, and uh, went into nursing, got into PA, been in urgent care for about eight years now, came here from Savannah, Georgia. From the beginning, we saw the need for several things, urgent care, family medicine, mm -hmm. pediatrics, personal injury, and, and we just kind of settled in to all those needs and, and have been providing since day one. Tell me a little bit more about the need here in this area. Well, here there's an influx of people from all over, so mm -hmm. we have a lot of, uh, from pediatrics to geriatrics, we see the whole spectrum of people. And adding to that, there's a need for people who are underserved or, or, or underinsured, specifically um, PI patients or personal injury patients. There's a need because insurance is not going to cover and uh, they need help. Mm -hmm. So. We, we work with uh, personal injury lawyers. We work with other entities that, that uh, finance uh, the, uh, the medical side so that we can take care of the patient. And honestly, what this all boils down to is getting patients the care that they need. And it's y'all's job too to help them, you know, stand up for themselves. Uh, absolutely, I mean, we get quite a few um, clients, potential clients that come in and they, they don't have health insurance. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, that's a problem. And so you have to be able to um, try to figure out how can you get this person the necessary care? Um, because a lot of them simply won't go to the doctor because they think I can't get treatment since I don't have health insurance. And of course, you know, getting the getting the person, the injured person, treatment. I mean, that's that's really the priority, the treatment that mm -hmm. they need. And I'll I'll brag on Daryl. Daryl's actually my primary care provider. He's there when you need him, and um, and I've seen that not just with me, but with with others, you know, that he sees. So you know, he he really is a he really does care. All right. Well, Daryl, where's your practice located? I need a primary care guy. Come see us. We're uh, 235 Singleton Ridge Road. We're right down from Conway Medical Center, in between the Medical Center and uh, Coastal Carolina College. So right. we, we have, we see a lot of folks, definitely. All right, well go by and see them. And for Beach Entry Lawyers, how can our viewers get in contact with you guys? Give us a call at 843-357-4111. Or on the web at www.beachinjurylawyers.com. The preceding portion of Living Local Carolina is sponsored by Beach Injury Lawyers.